Hello everybody and welcome back to Property Data and Tools and this week we're going to learn how to clean data, combine multiple data sets and how to calculate a simple regression with only one variable. So, as always we start with a couple of simple housekeeping things. So we have to activate all of our libraries and at this time there's a couple more. So there's Plotly, DPLR, uh, Dplyr, ggplot, ggthemes and so on. So check your packages if they are already activated. In my case they are. And then we can get started. All right. So as per usual, we start with loading a data set as well that is going in the back. So what do we do? We clean data. Cleaning data, sometimes you have missing values. Um, for an example, we create a little vector here that um, x um, which has six parameters or six entries sorry for that um, and two of them are na's so if we are printing them we see that two of them are na's so you can test there are certain functions to test if some of them are not available so is dot na is going through the whole of this vector and giving us yes or no's trues and false for a missing value and for an example, if you have a y, like we create a new string, which is called hello, um, and we check if that is a na, we get a false. So it is not a missing value. So sometimes you can um, also check if certain values are plausible. For example, when we are looking only at the transaction value, and we look at them, and there's a, a lot of them, uh, in our property data set, we can say that if properties have, are mostly transacted for a positive value. So we check how many properties are there which has a tr have a transaction value of less than zero. Luckily none. Well maybe some of them are not available, so maybe some of them have empty entries. So we check if any is a NA and what we get? False. Great. So we have no missing valuables. The same can, be, can then be done for area. Any kind of negative values? Are there any empties? No and zero. Great. The same is true for parking. Are there any? Oh, oh we have empty ones. So what we do? Question. Well, we can remove them. So first, any kind of transaction value which is smaller than zero, we claim to be NA. And any area size which is smaller than zero, we claim to be NA. Right? And now we miss them. So, since is there any properties which have NAs in them? Yes, they are. So, we create a new data set, new, don't work on the existing one, where we omit the NAs. Add with this property set. It created on the right side, you can see a new properties data set which has only 330,000 instead of 390,000. That means around 60,000 are having a um, missing value. So, the next thing what we do is we are looking for two data sets to be merged. We have done that already in QGIS based on their spatial location. We have merged the information from the center to the individual properties, the distance. We have merged a area's attribute to the individual properties on top and so on and so forth. But this time we are merging two tabular data sets by a common ID. How do we do that? Well, we st first start with a CSV load and then combine the two based on their suburb. So, first we create a new data set called crime by location. Look at them, et voila, we have the year, we have the postcode, we have the suburb town, we have the offenses and what kind of groups they are. So, we're looking at the number of burglaries, for example. Um, there's kind of two different kind of burglaries, non-aggravated and aggravated burglary. And what we do, we do a crime stats where we are summarizing the offenses by postcode. 
So we group by postcode and then create a summary of the individual offenses because afterwards we can then combine the two data sets based on postcode. Let's do that. We created a new data set, Crime Stats, which of course only has 627 observations. These are the number of postcodes, which only have two variables, postcode and number of offenses counted. So we create a properties data set to combine it to. We are looking only at sales and units uh, with only a subselection of attributes. And we want to group them by postcode and have the, trans have the transaction value as parameter. Voila, we created this property sale and now there's only 165. Why? Because these are only the postcodes and it has two variables, transaction and postcode. We combine this and the function is called merge. If you have a question how this works, always press F1 and you will get what it is. Sometimes it is used in different libraries, so you have to check that. So merge two data tables, it's probably in this one. And you have the description at the top, how it's used, what kind of arguments, what kind of parameters you can choose. And then at the end, very good, examples. Always go with them. Just choose those two and merge D1 and D2 and what they mean. In our case, we are combining property sales and crimes data based on the parameters postcode and postcode. They're spelled differently according to the individual data sets. Let's see how that works. It combines and creates a new data set. Voila. We can plot them. What do we want to plot? We want to have the number of offenses and the median house price as the two parameters. We want it generated in points and have a smooth line through the medians. Let's see how that looks. Boom. And ooh, we have to go, of course, into the plots. Here you see them. So we see a little bit of a, um, a correlation is too much. There is something happening. We might want to know about the, which of the postcodes are actually the dangerous ones or the low ones or the outliers. So we're adding the text. We're adding the text, which is the label, the postcode, um, at the same place. What size? Where is it? And we notch it left or right that you want to have it see through, all of that. And voila, we see, for example, that postcode three. 3030 is the postcode with the highest number of offenses. On the other side, we have outliers um, where we can identify which postcodes actually have a high price in comparison to the offenses or a low price in comparison to the offenses. Careful with this. Mostly this leads to very chaotic plots. You cannot read all of those postcodes. You can only read the outliers. So I would urge you not to use uh, text labels in this, in this kind of way. We can also make this into an interactive one. So this is plot interactive with Plotly, where we are only getting the information if our mouse is over it. And it also allows us to pan, like, you know, zoom around. Zoom, for example. Yes, let's zoom. Let's see who that is in there. There we go. So we see number of offenses and how what's the median price. Great. That's how you make an interactive plot. So if you want to save that plot, you just do, again, GT save, how you want to call it, let's execute, the size, define what uh, the resolution is, and then you can see it in your files. Don't forget, you have to reload, you free refresh, and then you have the unit price against crime stats. Let's open it, and here we go, is your plot, which you then can use in your documents uh, for your hand in. 
Correlation. Correlation, we talked about it, is not causation, but it gives you an indication in which direction things go and how closely they are aligned with each other. There are two ways of calculating it. Pearson and Spearman were both statisticians who figured that out how to do this. Pearson looked at the distance between the line they draw and the values they had. Spearman, on the other side, said it is more important to have the right sequence. So, in layman's term, Pearson is looking at a mean, while Spearman is looking at the mode. He's looking to be in the right sequence. Both are very useful, both give you an indication. Spearman uh, is, if you have very large spread, if you have outliers, Spearman is probably the better way to go. If you have a very large data set with lots of observation, Pearson is probably the way to go. So you can create a Pearson by calling the function core, where you say x and y's and what kind of method you would like to use, Pearson or Spearman. So when you execute them, we already did that for you, you get the two values uh, of minus and minus 0.46. Merging multiple data frames. What we do, we are going to merge the distance to the CVD as well as access to the transportation um, train station and we're going to merge them each one by property ID. These are data sets which we created in QGIS which you might also create for yourself with a different underlying data set and then you can merge them by a specific ID and we are using property ID. So we're loading the distance to CVD. We're taking away one of the attributes. We don't care about target ID. We don't care about the, uh, the distance to C the, the CVD's ID, because there's only one. And then we merge them, properties two. Then we load the distance to train stations. And we merge them again, properties three, with property by property ID. We're creating now a plot or a correlation and first thing we are only looking at sales so that makes it a bit smaller. But the problem is as soon as we plot these large data sets we don't see anything because they are just on top of each other. So we're creating a smaller subsample which is only 5000 long. Uh, we create a seed, which is a random seed, so it gives you always the same um, selection. And then we create this 5,000 long data set, where we then create a correlation, uh, create a plot. Et voila, we create a plot, which is measuring the distance to the CPT and the transport transaction value. Let's look at the plot. That takes a minute because it's 5,000 dots, et voila, and we have a, uh, a smooth method again where we show the relationship between them. Great. Well, we now want to maybe look at the differences between property types. Are houses more susceptible or less susceptible to the distance of, uh, to, the, to the CBD? That takes a moment again. But what you see here, we did that last week. Facets, we separate two data sets based on a value. And what you can see is that the, that houses closer to CBD seem to have a higher value in, on average than the units. Careful again, this is not taking into account their sizes or their their quality or any other attribute is just the distance and the house value. Again, we can make an interactive plot if we uh, do like so, or we can save this. I'll leave that up to you. We can also then create again the correlation for Pearson and Spearman. What is the correlation between the distance to the CVD and the transaction value? Um, it is negative, it goes down, and it goes down to a certain degree. That was it for today. It was a quick one. We are we learned how to 
merge multiple data set, how to remove um, certain missing values. And since you have such a large data set, you make most of it. That means if you're not sure, exclude. And then we also showed how to make a simple Pearson or Spearman correlation. I hope you enjoyed this and I see you again next week.